what's up guys this is the real JV and I'm going to show you how to get Kali Linux set up through VirtualBox on a Mac so, okay to get started you want to open up your browser go to Google and type in VirtualBox download Mac and the first link will take you to this page or you can just copy the link right here make sure when you download you're getting the one for OS X, so I don't download the Windows one or Linux or you know anything like that. So click on the link and go to download it. You can use your favorite, I don't know, download manager or whatever. Your save file works just fine also. And then before you leave this page, make sure you get the extension pack as well. Because without it, you could run into some problems. Um, you're you can't run the 64-bit version. And there's just a lot of a lot of stuff that comes with this extension pack that adds a lot of functionality to how it's actually going to run. After that, you're going to want to head to this page and either download the direct ISO or the torrent for whichever file you'd like to use. If you are running a 32-bit system, then make sure you download the 32-bit ISO or torrent because you can't run the 64-bit one on a 32-bit system and then also if you're running a 64-bit system you can run either one of them but without the extension pack from right here even if you're running 64-bit you cannot run the 64-bit ISO so if that's what you want to do make sure you grab both of them and then for the direct link you can either use a Firefox extension called down them all and when you go to download it, you can insert the checksum right here. So that's a way you can verify the checksum right from the beginning. I prefer to use the torrent version because then it kind of guarantees that you're going to get the correct file and just use whatever torrent client you're familiar with. I like Deluge because it's what I'm used to running Debian or Ubuntu. Um, it takes a little bit of configuring to get it set up on Mac. I'll make another video of that showing how to do that. But at any rate, however you get the file, doesn't matter. Once you have it, you're going to want to install VirtualBox by clicking on the link that you downloaded from the first page following the instructions and once it's installed you can come to the launch pad and it's going to be in the launch pad okay, once you're in once you have it opened up take the extension pack that you downloaded and double click it and it'll ask you if you want to install it in VirtualBox say yes It was installed successfully. Okay, now you're going to go to New and type in Kali Linux or whatever you want it to be called. It'll automatically populate what to put after that. Continue. I'd recommend using at least 2 gigs of RAM, no less. Uh, Create a virtual hard disk unless you already have one already made. And I just prefer using VDI. Some say to use the fixed size, but if you're running a system that doesn't really have too big a hard drive, such as myself, then a fixed size can take up a lot of space. So I just use dynamically allocated. And try to make it around 40. Depending on how often you're going to use it, that's that's plenty. Okay, after it's created, go into settings, system. No, sorry, I'm sorry, storage. And in this part, you want to come over to here and click Choose Virtual Optical Disk File. 
and then go to wherever you downloaded the ISO and choose the ISO. And then these are just personal preferences of mine. You can leave all the other settings after you add the ISO exactly as they are and it'll work just fine. And these are just preferences that I do on my own. Okay, then click on start. After it's running, you want to go to either install or graphical install. I prefer the graphical install just because it seems to be a little bit easier. Okay, once you get to the screen, click continue. Choose your location, just basic configuration from the beginning. It's going to process all the parts from the actual ISO that you downloaded. So, you know, this is the part right here where if you didn't have the correct ISO that you downloaded, it would come up with an error right here, which can be a huge hassle. And it took me a long time when I was first starting to set it up to realize that that was the problem. So just, again, I want to reiterate, you know, make sure that you definitely check what file you're downloading. Enter a host name, domain name, I don't have one. Okay, then your root password. Continue through the setup. And I don't know, there's a there's it's debatable which you should choose. I prefer just using guided, use the entire disk, but there's different setups for different you know, different outcomes are gonna, you know, need a different setup. But just for what I'm choosing, use it, the guided use entire disk is going to be just fine. And then write changes to disk. All right, now it's going to go through and actually install the ISO in the virtual machine. And this can take quite some time. But after, after you reach this point, nothing else needs to happen. It's pretty much automated. So if you made it this far, unless you have some crazy error pop up that I've never heard of, then you're pretty much done. So I don't really have anything else to show you for this part of the video. Um, the next one will be configuring it once you already have Kali Linux installed fully after it makes the way all the way to the end. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll kind of go from there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.